When I was a kid, I remember um, watching the Tour de France in 89, watching Le Monde and Fignon coming down the Champs Elysees. That was the first time I remember seeing what the Tour. I thought it was just a one-day race that finished in Paris, because obviously I didn't realise at that time they'd been racing for three weeks. And I, I remember that really stuck with me then. After that, the next one was Chris Boardman winning the Olympic Games in Barcelona. And then just falling in love with cycling after that. I'd started racing in 92 and um, started watching all the races on TV and video recordings of it. And, and the likes of Miguel Indurain, uh, Johan Museo, they were kind of my childhood heroes, really. For me, it was like the other kids living on our state who were into football and, you know, kind of Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne's at that time. And, they were my heroes, they were my sort of football stars at, at that time. When did you know that you wanted to become a professional? Twelve, yeah. That was it. Yeah, I was like, that's it, that's all I want to do. Um, I wanted to wear the yellow jersey in the Tour de France and I wanted to be Olympic champion. And, um, I, don't, I don't remember thinking of anything else other than that for, for those years, for my teenage years really. It was just, everything was for that. The boom in cycling, you know, everyone loves it and, you know, Companies like Rafa and you know shops everywhere. Um, there's a bike shop in every town now, and it's quite. Obviously, you still got money on, on the hip to go and buy stuff, but it's um, it's quite accessible in the sense that if you've got the money and you want to buy a bike, you can go and buy the top of the range bike that the professionals race on, or the kit to wear. Um, but even just to start, you know, you can buy now relatively cheap bikes that do the same thing. So it's. Um, it's quite accessible and it wasn't then, you had to go seeking out these little sort of shops in London at the time. You always had Condor cycles on the grazing roads which were, had all the best equipment in there. It was just a tiny shop back then, had little rooms that used to go in. I used to go in there and pervert the latest Italian shoes that I couldn't afford that the pros had at that time. And, and there was another shop on Wilsdon Lane called Whiskers, tiny little shop. And used to go in there and you used to have all the stuff over from Italy like Campagnolo, track chain sets and things. Again, couldn't afford. You weren't allowed out of school at lunchtime where I, when I went to school in Kilburn. I used to go out anyway and had an hour, so I'd walk to Wilsdon Lane, go in this shop and have a look around. And just, just for that really, a bit like kind of going in a record shop and, and looking at all the records and things. Do you enjoy cycling for the same reasons as you did when you were a kid or things? No, I do now. So it's sort of 20 years on being 30, mid-30s now, I kind of uh, have gone full circle really from, from loving it to hating the sport, to kind of absolutely loving it again now. And, and also because I'm coming towards the end now, I'm starting to, you start to reflect on 20 years, 25 years of riding a bike and think, you know, in some ways it's taken up probably most of my life now. And uh, it's, it's been such a big part of me and, and will continue to be. And I, I, w I wouldn't be where I am today in cycling without all the, insp like the inspiration I had as a kid, really, watching the likes of Indrain and Museos and all this, and um, because of those people that I ended up falling in love with the sport. And, and in the last couple of years, I've kind of started to meet all my childhood heroes, really, which has been quite an odd experience for me, really. So, like, I met Indrain last year and didn't know what to say to him. And just the other week, I met Johan Museo who brought his 17-year-old son to see me, who is now, I'm his hero, his son's hero. And I said, but I was your dad's hero. And it was kind of this odd, weird dynamic, you know. How does it, how does it feel now that um, you, you talk about all your big heroes, you are now sitting yeah. in shoes? Yeah, you never, you never feel like that. And I think that's a really good thing, because we see what happens to people, they start believing their own hype. And uh, I just uh, say, I just, I don't think any one person is bigger than this sport, I think that the sport will last f for another couple hundred years and you know you just you just I think you're just part of that history really and no more I'm just proud and honored to uh, to be up there with those people you know and, and, and like things like the hour if I could be on that list with those guys it would be an honor and uh, yeah just that's it really I don't really I still don't consider myself kind of the winner of the Tour de France I, I, I look at pictures of like Tevenet and that winning and stuff in the 70s and beating Merckx and you kind of, sometimes it dawns on me that, well, I've won that race as well, you know, and it's kind of, I don't think I'll ever can, like sink in that kind of, that you're up there with this, like I just said before, but meeting Museo's son and you kind of, I'm in awe of his father while his son's sort of goggle-eyed looking up at me, you know, and it's kind of this weird and his dad gave me his shirt that he won Tour of Flanders in 93 and and then I gave his son a world champion's jersey, you know, just kind of 
But that, that's the inspirational thing, you're sort of passing it through to the next generation and the next generation, I'm sure in 15 years time, I might be stood at the Tour of Flanders with Museo's son who's riding and my son's his, you know, kind of, so it just, and that, that's how cycling should be and how it should work, you know, it should be about passing that inspiration to the next generation. And did you have your I, I hope so in some ways, but more, more the, um, the social side of it, really. You know, I, I joined the cycling club when I was 12, 13, and it, it took me to a different world kind of thing, really. It took me to a different group of quite nice people, <laughs> which were quite different to the people I was hanging around with at 12. So from a social element and from a, you know, kind of sh straight away, um, it, it did so much for me, really. And, and even now, like, you see kids that come out on, on group rides and that, that it takes them out of the world they're in if they've got a tough home life or whatever and just gives them enjoyment really and it does not necessarily about winning the Tour de France 20 years down the line or whatever but just the social thing so I just hope I mean my kids already cycle and that's enough for me it doesn't they don't have to be on to win anything you know it's not about racing or anything like that but just just actually doing it and enjoying doing it that's the beauty of it really and it's it's brilliant